Hello. Hello, my name's Bronwyn Cooper, podiatrist and footwear expert here at Dr Foot Solutions in Dremoy. I often get asked what are the best shoes to run in. So we'll just quickly start with someone taking up running. Um, and I guess the question is largely out there because it's such a controversial topic in some areas when in fact it shouldn't be controversial at all and in the right hands it isn't controversial. So really a shoe should um, be there to give you a little bit of protection from the elements, from the road surface or the ground surface etc uh, and that's pretty much it. Um, you, everybody thinks that they need a lot of shock absorption, a lot of motion control, um, a whole lot of features like that when that's not necessarily the case. Now if someone is about to take up running they won't already have what I call a shoe affected movement pattern. They won't have a bad movement pattern. Some people will have a movement pattern that has been affected by their shoes. What do I mean by that? Um, if you have a look at this picture here, you'll see that this runner's landing out in front of them. So their hip and knee are fully extended and they're landing on the back of the heel. Um, so all of those areas are being stressed and as they roll through that foot and toe off, there'll be even excessive stress at the ball of the foot. Uh, with uh, much greater loading there than they should have. And interestingly, if people don't understand the influence of the shoe, you can get a runner who lands like that to take their shoe off. In, in every single case that I've seen in the last three years that I've known this information, that person will not land in the same spot when they have to spare foot or their sock on. Interesting, it also may, happens too if you've got them in a shoe with absolutely no heel height. Now, if that doesn't tell you that maybe heel height's got uh, a part to play in all this, I'm not sure what, what does. So a better movement pattern is simply landing straight in underneath the body. So it's pretty much how we'd run if we were barefoot. And if you're not sure about that, you can test it out. So does that mean that I should be running barefoot if I'm going to take up running? Look, according to some of the experts, um, absolutely, for most runners they can do that. Um, and I'm referring to uh, the Canadian physio in Montreal, um, Blaise Dubois of the runningclinic.ca, uh, who is one of the leading experts on this and lectures to health professionals and shoe retailers all around the world. Um, Lee Saxby is another one who's well known as the barefoot running coach from the UK. Now one of the things Lee says is that nobody can run with good form if they can't do a deep squat and I would absolutely agree with him. So what do I mean by a deep squat? Well it's not the traditional what I call the cowboy squat around the campfire or the Aussie squat which is squatting on your haunches. A deep squat is where you can actually literally drop your butt in deep between your ankles as you can see that I'm doing here at the moment and if you think about it you have to have reasonable flexibility or good flexibility your hamstrings and uh, your low back even, but your calf, your Achilles, etc. in order to be able to do that. Um, so that's another very important little test that you can uh, check out if you're taking up running. So if you take up running, you really want to either try running literally in bare feet or in a shoe that's got very little protection under the uh, sole of the shoe. What do I mean by that? Well, there are a number of brands now that are referred to as barefoot or minimal shoes. The Vigo Barefoot is one of the ones we stock here. has absolutely no support, but it has good vibrant protection in the sole. They generally have an anatomical last, so they're not interfering with um, toes, sort of um, being able to spread a bit as you toe off, which is really important for deep toe flexor strength. You've also got shoes with um, just a little bit of support, still zero drop, meaning no heel height. The Ultra is another one we stock because it has a great wide, also anatomically lasted toe box, as you can see along here. Um, and if someone takes up running with a shoe that's just going to give them adequate protection, generally their movement patterns won't be affected the way they can be if they put on an overly protective shoe with up to 12 mils of heel height. And if you think about it, your pelvis is pitched forward more, your calf and hamstring over time will shorten, etc. Um, if you're already running in that sort of shoe, does that mean that you can instantly go across to this? Absolutely not. If you're running in a shoe that's got a lot of highly structured and protective features in it, you will probably have to transition across. Um, there are people that go cold turkey, it's almost like coming off drugs. So, you know, you really want to do that under the supervision of a clinician and hopefully a footwear expert who really does understand this stuff. The other thing that you really want to be able to do is when you're trying on a shoe in the shop, you really do want to be able to have a short run. Now, whether it's on a treadmill or literally on the footpath, as we get people to do here generally, weather permitting, much, much better way of doing it. 
Um, so I hope that's helped clarify things a little bit. Um, I know that um, you could, there are debates and there are discussions that go on for hours, but I'm just trying to give you a very simplistic overview. I should also say that the shoe companies themselves that specialise in this area have a lot of very good information on their websites. Um, sometimes in the shoe box itself, like the Ultra, the Sketches Go Run, um, which is a minimalist one, has leaflets in there explaining the features of the shoe and uh, you know, there's very good information in particular on the Vivo Barefoot website. And they talk about natural shoe, sorry, natural shock absorption, natural motion control and natural sensory feedback all coming from the sole of the foot. And they're absolutely right. So do have a look at the websites of any of those um, uh, companies and you'll get really good info there. Thank you.